away from God. It's literally, if my sister brought him home, I'd be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but he- but- Welcome back to the Irish Bear Show. It's ranty time. You oh, can yeah. see just above my head, there's a little red ball thing that's making stuff coming out of his nose. That is ranty time. I'm here with my rant brother, Tony. Tony, how cranky are you today? I'm just as cranky as any other day, to be honest with you, man. Like the, 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 the novelty of us being amazing on Monday night and running all over the pats has worn off a wee bit. So I'm kind of getting back down to my usual pissed off levels. So I'm ready to rant about some shit. I'm ready to talk about some people. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm almost the guy with the red face, but not quite. I'm getting there. Yeah. Yeah. But the only, the only thing is you haven't got the baldness that, that comes with just having red face baldness. So yeah, look, let's get straight into this. Let's not stick around. People don't want to be listening to us talking stuff. We're going to start with this debate. And I'm going to put myself straight out there at the very start and say Brisker and Gordon versus George Pickett, right? I don't know about you guys, but I am sick to death of waiting for NFL Sundays to come along just so I can see whether it's George Pickens, whether it's some other lad that we didn't pick from God knows when, and they do anything. I mean, they can even walk onto the field. And people are like, oh, Bears made a big fuck up by not picking George Pickens. And, oh, our guys are defensive players. We should have been getting this guy and that guy and this guy and that guy. It wrecks my head. Stop talking about it. Stop going on about it. Support the players that you have. Now, Tony, you were a big George Pickens fan before the draft. That was something that you wanted to go with. How do you think about this Bisker and Gordon versus George Pickens conversations? Listen, there's nothing wrong with saying that George Pickens is a good player, but also we made the right choice in picking the two defensive backs. Both of those things can be said and both of these things can be true. Now, I was a huge fan of George Pickens coming out in the draft. If the Bears had picked him up in the second round or the first, even you know, if, if they'd have traded up somehow and, and got him, I would have been happy with that because I think he's going to be a, an impact player. However, at the same time, you cannot ignore the fact that our defensive back room was dreadful last year. And we were giving up, on average, I think it was like 24 points per game. You've seen how many blown coverages we had last year. It was horrendous, you know, and that needed to be addressed. You cannot win NFL games without if you're going to continue to lose a ridiculous amount of points and you're going to blow coverages all the time. So bringing in Brisker and Gordon was absolutely... A, a, a very credible way to go for the Bears. We had that many holes on this team that really <laughs> you could have picked anybody at that point and, and it would have made the position better. So, yeah, for all, I think George Pickens is going to be a great player and I really wanted the Bears to take him. I am in no way calling the Bears out for taking Brisker and Gordon instead of taking George Pickens because at the end of the day, if we hadn't taken Brisker, the, the safety position wouldn't be the same. I don't think Eddie Jackson would be playing to the same levels as he's playing to at the moment. And if we hadn't picked Gordon, then again, you know, we would have been looking at a situation where we were inefficient. You know, and fair enough, Gordon hasn't played great to start the season, but he's getting better. Um, we keep in mind, Gordon's effectively learned to play two positions at, at corner just now, uh, uh, seriously, th- from, from the first few weeks. So, you know, and it's and also it's too early. It's too early in their careers. It's too early in the season to be having this conversation. Anyway, you can't go off of seven games and say George Pickens should have been the guy that they went with instead of the two defensive backs. It's utter nonsense. 
But then you look at Twitter, man, and you look at the joys that come with Twitter. And it's like, George Pickens catches another ball, another bust for for poles, and they're smacking the ass for Eberflus. And you're like, hold on a second. Seriously, hold on a second. If we, if we, Chicago Bears weren't the only team that didn't pick George Pickens. Let's get that very straight. George Pickens didn't get picked for a lot of teams, right? Is George Pickens a good wide receiver? Yeah, he is. Did the Bears need a good wide receiver? Yes, they did. But in the fact of our general manager and that room, which, by the way, knows more than we ever will on any evaluations of any player, whether it's personality, whether it's ability, whether it's anything, injuries, whatever that may be, decided that Gordon and then Brisker were better picks for Chicago Bears moving forward than George Pickens. And your point is exactly right. If in three years' time, let's use Mahomes as an example. So Patrick Mahomes was something that you could go, yeah, should the Bears have picked him? Probably should have. Did did we know he was going to be the superstar that he was back then? No. So let's not judge the Patrick Mahomes today on what Patrick Mahomes was. I, like I heard someone say on national media, like, oh, Bears missed out on Mahomes. But no one was picking Mahomes for the Bears. In the same way that when it comes to George Pickens, if in three years' time people are looking at Pickens and he's like the greatest wide receiver ever to, to catch a ball, then you're like, yeah, Bears might have missed that one out. Yep. But it still doesn't mean that they were wrong to go with Gordon and Brisker at the time. You can't make that judgment call right now. You can't make that judgment call based on one, two, three games um, from certain players. But I was hearing about George Pickens in the week one game. Bears had just beaten San Francisco. And people were saying, oh, well, if we'd have had Pickens, we'd have won by 25. You're like, mm. you, you can't make that judgment. You can't make that call. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry, Bears fans, but Bears fans are notorious for living in the past and living in decisions that were made in the past rather than yeah. looking forward. If I need to hear about 1985 again on the TV, honestly, man, like it was great. It was fantastic. But we can't keep living in the past. We need to move forward. Decisions have been made. We've got a team. We move forward with it. And that's the way you got to look at it. You know, let, let, let's take a let's take a few minutes and and talk about George Pickens, okay? Because as I said, he's, he's he's looking like he's going to be a good player, you know. But at the same time, it's been seven games, so who really knows? Let's bring the stats up here. So he's got twenty six receptions so far on the season, three hundred and thirty eight yards and a touchdown, one touchdown in seven games. Do you know when that first touchdown came? Just literally three days ago, that was his first <laughs> touchdown in the yeah. year. Okay, now I understand that Mitch Trubisky has been thrown to, you know, and and it, you know, it basically hasn't had a great quarterback situation at all. Fair enough. Okay, you have to take that into consideration. But at the same time, you know, th- this is a rookie wide receiver. You know, he could put him in any team just now, and I don't think he's going to make an immediate impact. He's certainly going to not going to make an immediate impact on the Bears. The Bears are struggling to keep Justin Fields upright. Um, so in terms of getting the ball to George Pickens, it probably wouldn't have been slim Pickens. Uh, it wouldn't. Hey. It, wouldn't have, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have happened. You know, the Bears are building I... something. Sorry, where do you go? No, go on, man. Go on, man. Oh, I was just going to say the Bears are building something, and that doesn't necessarily involve having to just take a wide receiver for the sake of it. There, there was so much more that needed fixed on this team. You look at the. I mean, the Bears. You've said it yourself. We don't know what the Bears are thinking. We don't know what their grades are on on players. You know, they could have had George Pickens as and as a kind of second round grade as well. But they might have had Brisker and Gordon ahead of George Pickens. And that's not to say that they don't think George Pickens is a great player. They do. But the way the draft board has fallen, in, the, in terms of they had Brisker there and they had they had Gordon available, they thought, well, we didn't think those guys are going to be available. Let's pick them. You know, if they two guys weren't available at the time, then there's every possibility they would have picked up George Pickens. You know, because but again, we don't know how they had their their board set up, and we don't know who they thought were. Obviously, they thought Brisker and Gordon were 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 better picks, and they were going to help the Bears out more just now and in the future than George Pickens would be. Um, it's 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 crazy. What I wanted to bring up as well is just quickly have a quick look at the, the stats for, for, for Brisker and Gordon as well. So, you know, I, I would argue that Jaquan Brisker is en route for defensive rookie of the year. Yeah. Um, and we're only seven games into the league. Um, I don't think George Pickens is going to be anywhere near offensive rookie of the year. Okay. Um, so 42 tackles combined between solo and, 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 and duo, uh, two sacks, 
for the safety, one pass defended, one interception, one fumble recovery as well. This guy is everywhere. Anytime that you see the Bears defense on the field, Brisker is involved. He has been a huge impact player since he started, since game one against the 49ers. He has been making impactful plays. He has made this defense different than what it would have been if he wasn't in the team. And can I add to that, right? When the draft was done, right? If you, this is what I think in polls, and we don't know what's going on in that room with Cunningham and polls and that whole team. We obviously don't have a clue. But I think I'm looking at, if I'm polls, I'm looking at that and I'm going, Brisker is a starter week one. Definite starter week one. And we're now, I mean, let's say the call is between Brisker and, um, and Pickens. Let's say that's the call that they're looking at. They're looking at that going, is Pickens a starting wide receiver week one? Don't know. Not 100% sure. We've just gone and got um, St. Brown. We've just gone and got Pringle. We've got um, Mooney as our main wide receiver. And we're now looking potentially at tight ends. They may have seen that and gone, he's a very good player and someone that we really want. But this guy, Brisker, is a week one starter and a week one impact player. And as you rightly said, we're looking at the upside for him with Eddie Jackson. And suddenly we're forcing player like their their whole thing was we've got to beat the Packers, we've got to beat the Vikings, we've got to beat the Lions. That's the, the main focus for the Chicago Bears. Take the North back and never give it back conversation. And they needed to make sure that they were tightening at the back end of the field so that they can work everything up forward after that. And then they could go into year two and go, let's get our D line sorted, let's get our O line sorted, let's look at that defensively, so that we're not getting hammered out the gate and that the game isn't being forced on Justin to try and you're you're 15 points down. You gotta you gotta start rolling quickly. The Chicago Bears have been involved in every single game they played in this year. They've been there there or thereabouts going into the fourth quarter, including Green Bay when they were beaten beaten at the door. But they were still there. It was it was a couple of couple of moments away from being seven points down with eight minutes to go or seven minutes to go in the game. So they've always been there. Why? Because they've solidified defensively, and it's more difficult to to find holes in that Chicago Bears defense right now, as you can see by the third quarter scores. That's why they picked Brisker. They didn't want, I don't think, yet to have a game. They don't, sorry, I don't think they thought they had a game plan yet to get a wide receiver there that would go and win us the game because we weren't ready for that yet. Um, ironically, if Pickens was in the draft, this coming draft, I think he ends up in Chicago. Hmm. That's on my own opinion because that's when we're solidified enough to then go. Okay, who's the best wide receiver out there? Is it Pickens? And if it, if it was Pickens, then you go and have that conversation. If it's the third round and Pickens is still there, then you still have that conversation. That's the difference. Is the other one to stop before you put up. I just want to throw something to somebody to everybody that's there. So the one the one about Pickens' stats, like that one, twenty six receptions, two hundred thirty yards, one touchdown. Let's look at one touchdown for a second, right? Kyler Gordon was what, seven yards away from having the same amount of touchdowns as George Pickens. And he only doesn't get it because the wide receiver in, in New England makes an amazing defensive play by racing backwards. Most wide receivers don't do that. right? And therefore, had he scored a pick six, he would have had the same amount of touchdowns as George Pickens. Yeah, just putting that out there. It's a fair point to me. And let, let, let's, let's look at Gordon's stats. So obviously, you know, different position. 37 tackles uh, playing the two corner positions over the, the last seven uh, weeks. One forced fumble, four passes defended, and that all-important interception that he got last week against the Pats. I mean, again, if you're looking at a guy here who, as I, as I keep saying, is learning two positions as a rookie in a brand-new defense, his first year in the NFL, you've got to think about all the intangible pressure that's on him to begin with, not to mention the fact that, as I say, he's learning two positions. I can't see this enough, right? And, you know, fair enough, you can look at his, what he's done over the first few weeks and you can say, well, you know, he made mistakes. Um, yeah. He was a bit disappointing. And absolutely, because you know what? He's a rookie. He's learned two positions. He's going to make mistakes. That's inevitable. He's, he's effectively been thrown into the deep end here. Um, but, you know, we've seen over the last two, three weeks that he's getting better. He's getting better. He's making impact plays now. Like... Him making that, that interception that you had against the the Pats on Monday night, I mean, the coverage on it was fantastic. He's yep. getting to grips with things. He's learning the system. And he's getting more comfortable in himself in the NFL. And that game on Monday will have done them the world of good. And I think it will only move, lead to, to more interceptions moving forward. You know, fair enough, he didn't get the pick six. Whatever. He's, he's making impact plays. 
and I think you need to take that into account. Now, when you what I will caveat all this with is there's nothing wrong with having a conversation about what if the Bears had taken Josh yep. Pickens instead yep. of one of these two guys. There's nothing wrong with having that conversation. The, the rant that we're having here is because it's a con constant conversation every single week off of the back of, oh, well, George Pickens is out there and look at that fantastic ca catch that he made. Oh, we don't have anybody making that catch for us. It's apples and oranges because... They're play, they play different positions altogether, you know, and you, you can't compare the two of them. It would have been it would be great if we had more playmakers on offense doing things for Justin Fields, absolutely. But I don't think having having George Pickens in there is going to make a huge difference because Justin Fields still needs to be able to get the ball to him. Justin Fields, Fields can't be kept upright at the moment to make to make throws. He's having to run for his life all the time. Do you and, know what I mean? And here's so, and here's a and here's a question for him. Let's say, let's say, use the analogy. Everyone's, oh, George Pickens, exactly what you said. Should be in the Bears, and he would do all this and all this. We have Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney is a better player than George Pickens right now. Anyone that doesn't think he's not a better player right now, this second, in the future, we don't know. But right now, this second, Darnell Mooney is a better wide receiver in the NFL than George Pickens. All right. So it's, it's not like. Darnell Mooney is dropping all these amazing passes from, from Justin. That Justin has all the time in the pocket. And he's just looking around to see where the space is. and He doesn't have that. And the game plan on Monday was the game plan we're so excited about going forward. Wasn't because Justin was throwing loads of passes downfield and staying in the pocket. And there was loads of space and time. And he's, he's going through his progressions and he's onto progression number five. And there's, we just don't have the wide receiver to catch the ball. That's not happening, lads. It's not happening right now. He's looking at progression one, progression two, and maybe progression three, and he's getting rid of the ball because he's otherwise going to die. And that's not what George Pickens is exceptional about. I'm with you, Tony. Get the whole thing is, if George Pickens was in the team, what would week one, two, three, and four have looked like? That's a very fair and, and a, a, an interesting conversation. But in the same conversation, you've also got to have, what would week one, two, three, four, five, six, seven have been without Kyler Gordon or without Jaquan Brisker? Because you got you can't say both. You can't say George Pickens would have been in his team and not take into consideration that Brisker's just made an interception to give Justin the ball on the forty yard line with a positive score at the moment. Those yeah. are the those are the those are the matchups, and that's not what's happening right now. What's happening is look at polls as late as fuck up because we didn't get George Pickens. Or it's and again, it's not just Pickens. It can be pretty much across the board. Anyone that wasn't. <laughs> like I heard someone talking about uh, some of the O-line players that we, we no longer have playing for us. And they're like, oh, it's amazing how much we miss, blah, blah, and blah, blah. And you're like, oh See if anybody God. misses Charles Leno Jr. to me, I'm, I'm going to No, I, that's why I didn't want to mention his name. Like, I just didn't want to put it down. But it's it's that kind of stuff. Like, people talking about, like, oh, I don't know, uh, I think the kicker at San Francisco. It's like, we... we that, that, that what? Those days are gone, man. Khalil Mack makes a sack and it's all over Bears Twitter. Oh, we make Mack. Quinn, if Quinn balls out for the Eagles, everyone's going to be talking about how, oh, that's a terrible trade. It's yeah. actually a fifth rounder. And, oh my it's, God, man. Support your old, team. Support your players. It does. It's ridiculous, man. But, you know, what, what, you, what you're mentioning there about, you know, you know, if we'd had George Pickens over the first seven weeks as opposed to having Brisker and Gordon it brings me on to my next question then. So who has made that bigger impact, really, when you think about it? When you look at the contribution that both player, uh, all three players have made in the NFL so far this season, if you could honestly answer the question, would you have rather had George Pickens in there, who might have caught a couple of balls that were dropped, maybe, okay? Maybe, we don't know. Or, and again, we've seen what he has done in Pittsburgh, and he has made yep. a couple of fantastic catches. Yep. But really... It's been a couple of fantastic catches versus the impact that Gordon and Brisker have made over the first Brisk, seven if, weeks. If so, if we had the draft again and Bears are sitting where they're sitting, I don't think Brisker's available. Yeah. Don't think Gordon's available. Genuinely, I think they're gone. Because if you play the draft back now, I think Brisker would be taken in the first round. <laughs> Literally. I think at the end of the first round, at the very start of the second round, Brisker would have gone. Because he's going to be in the conversation for Rookie Player of the Year. And, and I, I think it's a really good question about who's made the bigger impact. If you're just going on the snippets of highlight reels for 10 minutes per or five minutes of each game, then you're probably looking at, well, Pickens, look at that chance, as you said. But if you're looking at the overall impact, not just himself bringing to the team, but the overall benefit of the team, 
Brisker's the best of the three. And then you're looking at Gordon. And and Gordon, what I love about Gordon, you said about him growing, is that he he could have fallen into a shell. He got targeted in week two and week three, and he fell down. He was targeted up in Lambeau, and he was targeted even by the Texans. And he was in a little bit of trouble. And then suddenly we get into, into week week six, I think it is, five and six, and he bats down a ball and you're like, okay, yeah, that's good. That's good to see. He's learned from that. And he wasn't getting targeted in week six. And suddenly in week seven, he's he's, he's picking he's picking pass out and, and basically cementing the game. And I just I just like that progression from him. And I still think if the draft is done today and we're getting to a point where it's Gordon versus George Pickens, I personally am still picking Kyler Gordon. That's just me. I think I think you need to look at this in terms of you know that pressure. How do people respond to pressure? And it's the old saying like pressure either creates diamonds or burst pipes. You know, so yep. you have to look at how people are reacting. And Taylor Gordon has reacted very well to the pressure, not just from you know the pressure he put himself and um, from the stakes he's made, but from the media, from the fans, he's he's responded very well. Now, there's been reports out there about George Pickens and his attitude and his personality. You know, we uh, Greg Gabriel on here a few times talking about how you wouldn't pick him for, for those reasons. Now, obviously, I'm not privy to anything like that at all. I don't know what, what he's like. But, you know, yeah, there's an argument to be made there that if that is the case and he's the type of guy that might throw the dummy out of the pram, then you have to think, well... Maybe picking Brisker and Gordon was the better idea in the first place because yep. they've responded better to this pressure. Now, Pickens hasn't had a lot of pressure so far. In fact, he's been the guy moaning that he's not been getting enough passes thrown to him. Now, he's been <laughs> put in a position where he's arguably getting a better quarterback situation than he had. You know, uh, who's better out of the two there? It's, it's six and a half a dozen for me at the moment, to be honest with you. Yep. Um, but, you know, eventually he's going to get to a situation where they have a better quarterback in place, where they have it all set up from him to be successful, and how is he going to respond to that? We're just speculating at the moment, but again, I think that's something that was taken into account when they were looking at these two guys and thinking, who would I rather have on my team? Who's going to have a bigger impact? And you've, you're looking at a guy at the moment in George Pickens um, who has complained versus two guys in the team who, especially with Brisker, in my opinion, has been out there and led by example. Uh, no complaining in the media, nothing like that. Um, and I think you, you really have to take that into account. So, and again, I'm not, and I was a big advocate of George Pickens, and I think as a player, skill wise, he's, he's going to be one for the future, absolutely. But football teams don't just look at that, they talk to guys, they interview guys, they find yeah. out exactly. We don't know half the shit that's talked about in the draft. We don't, we only look at draft profiles that people put out, and from what we do, and we look at tape. And when I say tape, it's very loose because we look at YouTube videos. Let's be honest, you know. So, <laughs> let, you know, you know. So we're we're, look, we're looking at these games, and that's what we're going off of. We don't know the ins and outs of everybody. Um, so I have to trust that the right decisions were made. And if I'm being honest, from what we've seen so far, I think the right decisions have been made. Sure, I would love more things around Justin Fields, but that will come in time, um, and and as people develop. But yeah, as well, I have to stop and with that. And there, right there, is exactly what what I would say around the fan base of Chicago. We need to give people time. We need to just, and, and that's something we just don't do. Like, okay, every single fan is up, delighted because we played on Monday. Everyone's ecstatic. You rewind five days, and people were talking about trading Justin Fields. They were talking about getting a getting a, a quarterback in the, in the first round. They were saying that Mooney is a bust. They were saying that. Every one of the O-line except Jenkins is shit. They were saying, Try, get rid of every one of our running backs. Get rid of the coaches. Get rid of everybody. And now, this week, because we, we play really well, that it's suddenly, oh, this is the most, we're going to win the Super Bowl. Now, no one's saying that. But it's like, oh, we can see a plan and a progress, etc. And I get that. You're allowed to be a fan. You're allowed to go up and down. That's emotions. I get all that. But at some point, you've got to sit there and go, okay, what did I see against Washington that was wrong? Well, there was a lot to see against Washington that was wrong. It didn't it didn't succeed? And and did they rectify that going into the next game? Did they look at trying to change that going to the next game? Yes, they did. For me, Dallas isn't necessarily about winning and losing the game. Of course, I'm a Bears fan. I want us to win the game, but that's not what I want to see against Dallas. I want to see the next little progression that we've taken from Monday 
and use similar threads to that, how that game was won, and then use it again against Dallas. And if we don't win because Dallas are a better football team, that's fine. I I, I accept that, and that is absolutely grand as long as we go down with our boots. With our boots. But to do that, going back to this discussion, to do that, you need to have players in the locker room that are all linked and connected into the same belief, the same thought process. And I think we have that right now. I think we're a very tight-knit football team, as shown by going into, into New England and winning the way we've won. I think we go to Dallas, another tough place to play in. A lot of diff- interesting calls will come from judge, from the from the referees. And you need to have that tight-knit going in. And... I'm not questioning George Pickens at all. I don't have a clue about the man. The man could be the nicest human being in the world and the two other lads might not be. But everything that's been seen from from everything we looked at in Chicago right now is that we have that tight-knit group. And I just want the fan base to realise and give those guys time to make mistakes, to make errors, but to move on. But before we go, because we've been ranting for 26 minutes, we said we'd have one last thing. right? (laughs) One last thing, right? So... We watched the game on Monday, and I remember watching it live and thinking, oh, Mac Jones, that was a bit of a dirty slide. And then we come back on Tuesday, and we see it wasn't the only one, right? He kind of went after Kyler Gordon, not Kyler Gordon, he went after Brisker a few times with sliding and, and movement on it. So my thing is, when Brisker intercepted intercepted Mac Jones, and Mac Jones had to sit his ass down for the rest of the game, I remember people like, oh, that's a bit harsh on Mac Jones. Based on what I saw on Tuesday morning, delighted. Couldn't yeah. happen to a nicer man. What was your take on our good friend, Mr. Jones? See, be honest with you, at the time when it happened, I kind of the, the first time I seen it live, I thought, oh, that, that's been a that's been an accident. But then I watched the replay back and he clearly raises his foot higher. And I was like, he's a he's a dirty bastard. He's done that deliberately. And at the time, I called it out and I said, there's no way he can get away with that. And then obviously, Brisker comes back in the next play and gets an interception, or the, the second play after that and gets the interception. It's like, well, fuck you, Mac Jones, that's what you get. And then and then Dolph Kleeman, or Kleeman, or however you pronounce his name on Twitter, uh, put out a, a, a thread where he actually highlights two or three videos where Mac Jones has actually went out his way where it looks like he's went out his way we're, we're not saying for definite you know but it certainly <laughs> looks like he's went out his way to do damage to other people and i'm looking at it, i'm going how the hell is he getting away with this this has to be the, the nfl need to get involved in this and say what, the, what what is going on here there needs to be a fine or something because to me to me it looks deliberate that's absolutely shocking i agree with you and you know what's funnier flip it the other way all right, so Gordon goes in, and as Gordon jumps up, he gives a little kick to Mac Jones on the ground. So a little, little raises his foot, so he's jumped over him, so he's not connected to him, but he's dropped a little foot. Flag's going in, 25 yards, and he's getting a 15 grand fine, minimum. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Quarterbacks, quarterbacks have got the easiest ride in the last couple of years in the NFL from decisions that are, are to make the league cleaner and happier and healthier and keep the playmakers on the field. That's fine. But the quarterbacks has a responsibility themselves to the game. And I think if the fact that they aren't going to find Matt Jones, the fact that they aren't been speaking about this um, in NFL quarters by the looks of it is wrong because it, it, it sends out the wrong message to Mac Jones, first of all, and then to everybody else that, that plays that position that you yeah. want to have a pop at, at a, at a at a safety, you want to have a pop at a linebacker. You want to, have a, they can't touch you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fall on the ground. You, I know they're not gonna be able to touch me, so I can then put my foot wherever I want. Okay, referee might have missed that, and I get that. The referee, all the referee seeing is where did he slide, so I can put the marker down. So on this occasion, I'm not even blaming the refs on that. What I am looking at is the NFL officiating after the game, going whoa 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 whoa, that's not that's not right. What he just did there, that's not acceptable, and we're gonna find you, and we're gonna find you heavy. Because we want to put a statement out to everybody that a quarterback can't be touched, but that doesn't mean a quarterback can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. And, Listen, and I, I, I'm not saying for it. definite that this was, a, we can't say it was deliberate, okay, nope. because it's not fair, right? But from what you look at, you can make your own assumptions of it. But there has to be some sort of retrospective investigation, at least. Correct. Micah Parsons, Cowboys defend, uh, defender Micah Parsons tweeted out last night. Um, God forbid he makes contact with Mac while he slides. Man will get fined twenty five thousand. Hashtag protect defenders. Do you know what I mean? So he's obviously put out there as well, and he's like, "There's, there's something going on here." Like the quarterback gets all the protection. The offensive t- 
team in general get all the protection. Wide receivers yep. got all the protection. You know, you can understand it to, to an extent because the impact play is coming from the defender and the and the offensive yep. player. So I get it to an extent, but you can't have it that they're taking the piss and saying, well, we're going to be protected regardless. And to me, it looked like it might have been a deliberate move. Um, the more that you look at it, and, and obviously uh, your man, uh, Dov Kleeman, has, has saying that he's he's actually trying to hit defenders, and he's put the video out there. And it, it, honestly, if you w- guys watch the video, um, or watch the videos that you put up, and to me, it definitely looks that way. And to, if that is the case, that's absolutely out of order. It's shocking. It's bad sportsmanship. Um, and the guy, I mean, the guy's having a tough time, Mac Jones, because let's be honest, he's he's not as good a quarterback as everybody made out he's going to be. Uh, Justin Fields is a better quarterback than Mac Jones. Yep. He outplayed him. Um, but, you know, just because you're sore, man, doesn't mean you say you have to go out there and start kicking people as a result. So that needs to be yep. reined in. But it's also in certain sports you can do that, and then the next play you get absolutely muffed up, right? So let's say let's say an O lineman does it to a D lineman, just just does it to a D lineman. The next play the D lineman can absolutely destroy the guy mm. as a as a wretch. And in nearly every sport you can think of, you have that scenario. The NFL quarterback is the one, almost the one diamond in the sport in all sports that gets protected, yeah. and. He de- but he then has a responsibility to the game. And again, I'm not saying Matt Jones did this on purpose. I'm just talking about all quarterbacks. They have responsibility to the game. And I think this is really important. If Justin Fields did that, I'd be calling Justin Fields out on that. If 100%. Justin went in and left his foot like that on whoever Dallas safety is there or whoever Dallas um, corner is there, if he did that, I'd be calling him out on that as well. Because that's not, it's not right. It's not what you want to see in the game. Because the quarterback has a responsibility to the game as well as responsibility to his team. Like yeah. where that came from, I've no idea. Look, justice was served. He picks, he gets picked by by Brisker, who then goes down the sideline. If I was Brisker, I'd have ran into his face personally, but then he probably gets a 15 yard penalty and all his other shit. But I think for me, Brisker does it, that's how you respond to that kind of crap. Is you you literally just catch the ball and, and he ends up getting benched on the sideline for the rest of the game and his yeah. career is is now under pressure that wasn't there, let's say, three weeks ago. So that's how you answer that kind of stuff. Um, but again, it's I really think it's on the NFL to to have a look at stuff like that and and change what, what outlook we have on, on everything like that. Tony, as always, my good man, it's been absolutely fantastic having, I think this is rant, rant number three. I feel so, better. Uh, I feel, again, it's a form of therapy. We're getting it out there. Guys, I highly suggest that if you're listening to this, that you ran to the TV as well while we're talking. Correct. Get out there. It's good to get Correct. out there. Like, be a healthy human being. That's what it's all about. Yes. We're not machines. <laughs> we're not. Uh, and if you want us to talk about any other rant stuff, by all means, you have Tony's Tony's at, you have my at there. Send it to us. Send it to the Irish Bear Show directly. What exactly you want to rant about. And we will talk about anything. We've talked about the Bears and football, but we're up to talk about anything. TV yep. shows, the shop. The cost of milk, whatever it is, Rugby. show it on to us. Roll, let's not go that far. Let's not go down that road. I'll have Karen on to me straight away. But we'll literally talk about anything we possibly want to have. Um, it's it's as Tony already said, it's therapy, it's good. But at the end of the day, it's all about Sunday. We're having this weekend. There's a show on tonight with the lads. Are gonna gonna discuss everything with with Dallas. So make sure you click on the subscribe button, click on the watch button. Make sure you tell all your friends to go on to the Irish Bears show because you know what. It's a bit of fun. Tony, before we go, nothing to say? No, nothing Nothing other than we'll be live later on today as well. Oh, actually, I, I do apologise. This is actually going to get released on Friday, I believe. So, so we this, were live yesterday. Yeah, so just the, the, the days are all mixed up. We will be live. or We we were live yesterday and the show was yeah, It was a great show. I made amazing, a lot of great points on the show. It. <laughs> you can't miss it. You actually can't miss it. It's an amazing show. But we'll be back on Sunday with the pregame and the postgame. So make sure you join in and tune in. Make sure you do that. And before we do that, like we always want to say is, bear down, everybody. Bear down, guys.